Hey everybody, I wanted to do a little bit more on the message of the bear in the constellation and um, some other numbers and dates to look at. I'm going to try to do something that I have not done before. I'm going to try to see if I can read what I put in my document at the same time. And I bet y'all are laughing. This is probably something very easy to do, but it seems scary to me. Okay, so my small bear dream of 1026 uh, the small bear is the little dipper with the polaris north star at the end of the table and um, so when i pulled up and i put the link in the previous video it, um, chapter 33 of what's his name ew bullinger um, who does he does the number in scripture book um, but he also has this constellation book, but the constellation book is online. So when you look up the little bear, which is Ursa Minor, it says, This constellation, which we must therefore call the lesser sheepfold, contains 24 stars there. Um, but I'm pretty sure somewhere in there it said that seven are the brightest. Anyway, the brightest star is at the point of the tail is the most important in the whole heavens. It is known today as the polar or central star, which does not revolve in a circle as does every star, but remains apparently fixed in its position. But, but, but though the star does not revolve around other stars, the central point in the heaven is very slowly but steadily moving. When these constellations were formed, the dragon possessed this important point, and the star, uh, they're using a Greek symbol for Polaris. Uh, the star in Draco marked this central point. By, by its gradual recession, that point is sufficiently near this star in the lesser sheepfold. Anyway, uh, well, I'm not gonna go into all this. Y'all can look it up. The part that I thought was very interesting is that um, the polar star, what it has to say is, these are they who all through the ages have been partakers of the heavenly calling, who desired a better country that is a heavenly wherefore god hath prepared for them a city the city for which abraham himself looked this was no earthly city but a city whose builder and maker is god hebrews 11 10 through 16. these have always been a smaller company a little flock but the kingdom shall be theirs even the kingdom of god for which they now look and wait i i would love to know when this book was written um, they have not yet received the quote, they have not yet quote, received the promises, but having seen them afar off, end quote, by faith, they were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Hebrews 11, 13. Their Messiah has accomplished the redemption of the purchased possession and in due time the redeemed will inherit it unto the praise of his glory Ephesians 1 13 now there's a bright star named Kochab K-O-C-H-A-B which means waiting him who cometh I thought that was pretty cool um, then it gives some other stars, and then um, there's a star named Ar Arctos, which we derive the term Arctic regions, which means, according to one interpreter, a traveling company, or according to another, the stronghold of the saved. But there is not only the heavenly sea, which is compared to the stars of heaven, but there is the sea that is compared to the sand of the sea, the larger flock or, or company who will enjoy the earthly blessing. Maybe this is like way over, um, may, maybe not anything that you're interested in. I don't know. Um, 
So I've done a video about the importance of October 30th. Um, then we have uh, Halloween. A lot of people have done videos about the importance of Halloween. Um, and then I had, I know November 2nd is important, but I didn't think about November 1st. And like when it is finished, did there, did his video, Todd, when he did his video about how wouldn't it make the most sense that, that um, Jesus would return on Halloween? Because that's not when people would be expecting it. To me, that means it's most likely, if, if you're going to look at it that way, it's most likely that it would actually be on the 30th or the midnight hour between the 30th and the 31st, which I would believe would be the midnight hour in, uh, in the United States. Now, <laughs> I don't know. I, I keep coming up with that same song um, that the Crab family did. In the, in, in the midnight hour, we'll be going home. It just seems like that. I didn't. I did not know that song before all of this. And every time I, every time I end up seeing it, I'm just like, oh, oh, could that be? Anyway, so then I went into. Um, I did not know. I don't know. T I, I mean, I know about Catholicism and um, and you know that there was a rebel, Protestant revolution. And mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of stuff that um, Catholics believe that's not in the Bible. And they'll say, it's, well, it's our tradition. But all tradition is not, no matter what denomination you're in, all tradition is just that. It's tradition. That doesn't mean that's what God wants us to do and what the Bible says for us to do, right? Um. And I really believe that's the reason why even my liberal Baptist church wanted me to leave the church. I mean, they said, we don't want anybody that hears from the Holy Spirit. Why is that? I mean, they told me to leave because I asked to be baptized, but I told them, hey, the Holy Spirit wakes me up. I spend two or three hours studying the scriptures with the one word that he's given me. And uh, I'm just having a great time. This was back in 2005. Um, so I got born again in March 2005 after nine months of being severely depressed after God had told me about my husband's adultery. Um, and then so from March 2005 to um, July of 2005, when I asked to be baptized, God was speaking to me every day. I can't think of a day that he didn't speak to me. Um, and my testimonies are in, on my video. Um, I talk about the toxic church uh, on my channel. Excuse me. I talk about the to toxic church. I talk about how God speaks to me. Um, and I know he speaks to a lot of y'all too. He's speaking all the time. He speaks to us in different ways, but um, he he's speaking all the time. Uh, oh, goodness. I'm losing... Losing my train of thought. Okay, so November. So I got into the whole Catholicism thing yesterday, and what? I, I mean, I in fact I still haven't read it all. I just read the beginning of the Ninety Five Thesis. Everybody knows, you know, Martin Luther had a complaint against the Catholic Church, and for me, he didn't go far enough because he did not complain about the Catholic Church baptizing babies. That's just me. I don't. I don't see infant baptism as being biblical. How, you know, how many denominations? If you look at the history of that, I think it didn't come into place until around the year four hundred twenty or something, four hundred twenty A.D. Um, and this whole thing with. Um, Halloween being the night before All Saints Day and All Souls Day. So I needed to get into which was which because it was a bit confusing. Um, and different places you looked had different, different things. But I think I landed on that November 1st is All Saints Day and November 2nd is All Souls Day. 
Well, you know, the Catholics think that if you've been baptized in the Catholic Church, you're going to heaven, but they believe that you may not go immediately after your death if you are living in sin. So, you know, Catholics um, say you're supposed to go and do communion, the Eucharist, and you're supposed to, I mean, they just got all these things you're supposed to do. Um, but the disturbing thing to me when I started looking into this was first I read the uh, beginning of the 95 Thesis and um, Martin Luther had a huge problem with the selling of indulgences and with um, purgatory and other things. I need to read the whole thing. Um, maybe someone who has read the whole thing might want to put a comment into what most of it revolves around. Mostly it was about buying indulgences and buying your and, and working your way into faith, into um, salvation. Um, but when you look at what I looked at, the Catholic Church itself says November 1st is All Saints Day, those belonging to God. And All Souls Day on November 2nd is those in purgatory. People who are Bible believers don't believe in purgatory. Um, and in fact, I, do, I did write down that Martin Luther, you know, was considered a heretic, but his thing was that um, he disagreed with the prayer for the dead, and, and it does, I listened to the, they have like a little, um, a little video that goes along with what does it mean to celebrate All Souls Day, yeah, All Souls Day which is November 2nd, which is for those in purgatory. And it says, the video says, by our efforts, they will reach heaven. November 1st is the day of innocence. And November 2nd is for those who were guilty, but they're, in, they're going to heaven because they were baptized in the Catholic Church. So, we, so they need to go, the faithful need, who are alive need to go and pray prayers for the dead. I mean, goodness, that's what Mus uh, excuse me, Muslims, that's what Mormons do. They pray for the baptism of the dead. I don't know. Maybe y'all could help me. I'm pretty sure in the scriptures it says we're not to pray to the dead. I guess this is not technically praying to the dead. Actually, if you think about it, the Catholic Church prays to the dead saints and to dead Mary. I don't know. This is... <laughs> I feel sorry. I feel sorry for all the people who are religious and listen to um, listen to traditions instead of just listening to God every day and and reading your Bible and praying and hearing the still small voice. Anyway, um, I did notice that purgatory was a concept that was named in 1160 to 1180 A.D. It was not around for 1100 years after Jesus died it's just a figment of religion so if you think about that you've got halloween november 1st and november 2nd all being days that god despises in in religious pharisee christianity um Antifa's big day is Saturday the 4th. So I think all of those things are evident to me. Plus we do know that um, November 2nd is an anniversary for Israel. We know uh, John at Watchmen for That Great Day figured out that from November 29th, counting backwards, um, you end up on 10 30, yeah, 1030 as being, oh gosh, I got so many numbers. 10.30 is 30 days before November 29th. November 29th is important because of the generation should not pass before, um, before the rapture, basically. Um, so I think if someone, if someone were to do a, I mean, plus, you know, we actually know when the new moon was sighted, right? 
If you go to RenewedMoon.com, the new moon was first sighted actually on the east coast of the United States on the 20th of October. So that's the evening of the 20th, which would mean that the if you were going on that, because it's evening to evening, the day of the celebration of Yom Teruah, um, I don't use Rosh Hashanah because that is not the biblical term for the feast. Um, but anyway, so Yom Teruah, um, Feast of Trumpets, would have been celebrated on the day of the 21st. Now, if you which would then mean that Feast of Atonement would be on the day of October 30th. But if it turns out you go with, um, with uh, Jerusalem time for the sighting of the new moon, that was on the night of the 21st. So that would mean that the day of celebration, which is following that evening of the sighting, which is the 21st, the day of celebration for Feast of Trumpets should have been on October 22nd, which then, if you count 30 day, excuse me, if you count um, nine days added to the um, 22nd, you end up with October 31st as being atonement. So, um, I think, you know, <laughs> I know some, I know we're all getting kind of weary and bleary eyed at looking all of these numbers. Um, and I've got all the people who are like, oh, she looked at these numbers before and she wasn't right. And I think of um, Steve Ciccolante. I don't watch him that often, but I do remember him doing a thing saying, you know, what kind of courage does someone have if they are always saying the day and hour we do not know? Because obviously we don't know, right? But we are supposed to be looking. And anyway... That scripture has nothing to do with the rapture. That scripture has to do with um, God's word. You know, if you read, I think it's Matthew 24, 36, that has that scripture in it. you got to look at the verse right ahead of it, which is Matthew 24, 35. It's about God's word. It's not about, um, it's not about the rapture. But anyway, there's... Um, I... I I just want to, I want to hear from God. That's my top priority. My top priority is to hear from God. So when he speaks and why he tells me these things, I'm not going to ask the potter why he's made me this way as the clay. I'm not going to ask him. I mean, I've, I've, you know, I did ask him after last week, and I did ask him, like, why are you putting me out there as to these things to look at, these dates to look at, when they're not happening? And and then I was like, you know what? I'm I'm fine with it. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I really don't care whether people think I'm crazy, and I don't care if I have tons of viewers or not. I care about whether I'm doing what God wants me to do and whether he is smiling on me and taking care of me and providing for me and giving me opportunities to walk by the Spirit. He knows my heart and he knows that I don't want to uh, I don't want to offend people. I don't want people to go, oh, you know, but and it's fine if your channel is going to take a break from that. That's fine. I'm just telling you, in my case, I don't get to take a break. I've asked him. I'm not going to be taking a break. So, uh, looking at the other dates, we've got November 7th, which is Billy Graham's 99th birthday. We have uh, November 8th, if you think about it, November 8th into the 9th was a miracle already in the United States where everybody said there's no way that Trump is going to win. And he told me and a bunch of other people, God told me and a bunch of other people that Trump was going to win. We went home, we went to bed sleeping like a baby. That what looks impossible to the world is exactly what God is going to do. That's how he's supposed to get the attention. But the people, and that's why he gave people this opportunity to see that what was impossible, God made possible. 
but they still refuse to look. They still refuse to look and see God and that God is sovereign. God is in control. So, um, yeah, we'll talk. I'll talk about the other dates that are after um, this first, I mean, 30th through the 3rd. I just think that if you looked at all the um, preponderance of the evidence, all of the convergence of dates, this is this would seem to be it. Have I had a voice say to me, this is it? Like I've had a voice speak to me before, um, persevere, calling me by name, a voice. It was a voice. Um, and I, I know some of y'all hear in, in the audible voice. And there's so many different ways he speaks. Anyway, I'm running on again. Uh, I... I Pray that you receive this. If you're a Catholic, I pray that you will stop listening to, or any religion that you that you put more value in what your pastor has to say than you know really. In fact, that goes for the prosperity gospel and the hyper grace and the seeker friendly and all of that. You know they they make money and they deceive people because the people are will listen to one of these people and not do the examination of what they are hearing to see if it matches the Bible. It's it's really, it's lazy, lazy. I said it, it's lazy, it's lazy. Don't listen to these people. We were told in the end times the false teachers would be increasing. Beware. Warning, 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 Mr. Robinson. <laughs> yeah, I used to like that show, whatever that was. Can't even remember. Uh, anyway, um, but what does God want? God wants his people to say, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to be still and know that I am Lord. Or I'm going to be still and know that God is Lord. And I'm just going to. I'm just going to read the Bible and ask for the Bible to be written on my mind and my heart to where I can see when I'm being lied to. God does not want us to be deceived. Satan is the one that wants us to be deceived. So I'm begging you, if you're still watching this video and you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that you learn the depth of God's character and you learn what Jesus has to say about things, please, please submit to God. Give up your life and tell him, I want to read the Bible and be able to understand it on my own. Pray that before you read the Bible. Ask him to give you eyes to see and a heart that can hear God's message that is tenderhearted to where it will um, will bring forth fruit it will grow up into being a tree it may start out as a tiny tiny seed like the faith of a mustard seed but god will take that and grow it to where you could even be walking on water someday so i love y'all and uh you know go out there and don't be afraid to share the gospel the people, they they aren't listening. We know that. But as we continue to share the gospel, A, God is glorified, and B, we might be bringing someone into the kingdom which would not only benefit them, but also give us reward. I love you. God bless you. Um, hey, I made it through a video without any singing. How about that? <laughs> All right, bye. Love y'all.